Okay, so this is lecture two on operational amplifiers. Uh, before I continue, I wanted to make a comment that I forgot to mention last time that for this like, chapter, I'm making shorter uh, lectures, at least the first few ones, uh, because it turned out that uh, this just discussing one specific configuration was taking uh, the, uh, about uh, 15, 13 to 15 slides uh, and therefore and making do consider discussing two in one lecture was becoming too long so I'm making shorter lectures uh, focusing on just one fun configuration at a time at least the next three ones then we'll see after that I still haven't prepared the PPTs for them so okay so last lecture we ended I ended with a question as to what are the configurations that can be used to make an op amp with a gain of the order of gmro the whole squared i hope you have written down your answer to this question here is the answer so the possible configurations we can use to make a set op amp with a gain of this is a telescopic cascode differential amplifier a folded cascode differential amplifier or a two-stage amplifier where the first stage is a simple differential amplifier followed by a common source amplifier so there is a two stages so we'll study each of these configurations in the next three lectures from the perspective of building an op amp till now we had looked at them as amplifiers now we look at them as op potential op amps and the difference between what we've done till now and what we'll do from um, in the next uh, three lectures is we'll look at these circuits by applying negative feedback to it all right that is in fact that is primarily what we will do and then we'll of course also do a comparison among these three uh, for frequency response gain etc a qualitative comparison and after we do these three then we we'll look at configurations that give voltage gains of gmro cube or higher so that will be after three lectures so let us begin with that telescopic cascode the differential amplifier so this is a circuit of course now we are quite familiar with this circuit because you've done assignment three with it so now we are saying let us use this circuit or think about this circuit as an op amp and as I said, we'll look at what happens to this circuit when we apply negative feedback to it. And what we'll do is we'll just apply a unity gain negative feedback. So we'll just connect a wire from the input to the output and study the properties of that circuit. All right. So we say, okay, let us put this circuit uh, in a unity gain feedback configuration. So if we have two inputs here. The output is here and we want to connect the output to the negative input of the amplifier. So of course the first question is which of these is the negative input. So one of these is positive, one of these is negative. If the output is taken here, so which is positive, which is negative. Let us think about it. So if, if this is, if we, if we look, put the input here, then we know that from the gate to drain there is an inversion. So if this is positive, this is negative, and then from source to drain, the common gate, there is no inversion. So if this is negative, this is also negative. So if this is positive, this is negative, which means that if this is negative, this is positive. So this is a negative terminal. Let us also check this side. So if this is positive, then this is negative. If this is negative, then this is negative. If this is negative by anti-symmetry, this is positive. All right. So, if, so V in one is the positive terminal. V in two is the negative terminal. If the output is taken here, so these are the plus and minus terminals. So now, we, what we want to do is, we want to short the output to the negative input and then study that configuration. So here is the circuit. So we short the output to the negative input. Uh, and we the what we want to study specifically is what is the output voltage swing 
for this unit again configuration which incidentally is the also the input voltage swing because the input and output are tied together now for a general purpose op amp which is what we are trying to design or think about we want the output voltage swing to be as high as possible all right because the general purpose of amp uh, now for your assignment 3 you or your design specification was that this uh, output voltage swing had to be small it had to be only about 0.3 volts but that was only because you are going to, you are going to connect this output to the input of a common source amplifier and therefore a 0.3 volt output swing was okay for that specific purpose for that specific application uh, but for a general purpose of amp an output swing of 0.3 would be just lousy it will be a useless uh, op amp who would want to use an op amp that works for only uh, a range of 0.3 volts out of 3 volts all right so with that let us find the output swing for this configuration so in order to find it is best to put numbers uh, it's much easier to calculate numbers rather than doing expressions so let's put some numbers and let us put them such that at least for the open loop we get as high an output swing as possible so we want so if you think of this circuit without the shorted uh, wire then we want vo to go as high as possible uh, and we have to go as low as possible while keeping all transistors in saturation which means that we want to make vg5 as high as possible and vg3 as low as possible so we'll say okay let us uh, let's assume threshold voltages of 0.4 and let us assume overdrives of 0.1 for all transistors just for the sake of this calculation uh, and then uh, to make VG3 as small as possible, we design accordingly. So we'll say, in fact, overdrive is 0.1 and VT is 0.4. So VG9 will be 0.1 plus 0.4. So this will be 0.5. Similarly, VG7 will be 3 minus 0.5 to 2.5. And we want to make VG5 as high as possible. So if VG7 is 0.5, the overdrive of M8 is 0.1, which means that this node voltage has to be 2.9. And then we say this gate source voltage is 0.5. So we make VG5 2.4 volts, 0.5 here, 0.1 here. So 3 minus 0.6 equal to 2.4 volts. So VG5 is 2.4 volts. Uh, we could make VG5 lower and everything would work except that if we make VG5 lower, the output voltage swing will also become lower. All right. VG3, I have made 1.2. Uh, how does one decide VG3? So VG3 uh, determines the source voltage of M4 and M3. And the source voltage of M4 and M3 determines how high the gate voltages of M1 and M2 can go. So I put some number, it is not of great significance as we'll just see in a minute. With these numbers, we ask ourselves, what are the minimum and maximum output voltages possible in this circuit while keeping all transistors in saturation? So VO min and VO max. So finding both of these will give us the output voltage swing. Okay. So, okay, so please pause and you find the VO min, VO max and then continue. I, I would strongly recommend that you spend some time thinking about uh, finding VO min, VO max because thinking will make you appreciate the circuit more. All right, so I put the numbers again here just for reference. Uh, so let's ask ourselves how much is VO min? What is the lowest voltage that can exist at the output while keeping everything in saturation? So the first thing we look at is, okay, as VO goes low, which transistors are possibly likely to go out of saturation? Because those transistors will determine VO min. So the first thing we say is, well, as VO goes low, 
the drain source voltage of m6 will be larger so m6 is not going to go into triod or it's not going to go out of saturation as vo goes low low m4 may go into triod also as vo goes low let us see what happens to m2 m9 actually so as the gate voltage of m2 goes low the source voltage of m2 will go low and therefore m9 may go into triode so we need to look at that also so let us look at that so we are saying the lowest voltage that can exist at the source of 2 which is this node is vg minus vt of m9 which is 0.1 volt and the voltage across m2 has to be 0.6 volts the vgs uh, of v, well here it is vgs plus 0.1 so it is 0.6 volts all right so the minimum voltage that is required to exist at the gate of m2 is 0.6 volts due to m2 and m9 actually because m9 will go into triode so vo has to be higher than 0.8 for m4 vo has to be higher than 0.6 for m9 now the worst case is 0.8 so vo has to be higher than 0.8 volts all right because if it goes below 0.8 m4 will go into saturation so that is vo min let us look at vo max so for vo max we say okay what is the highest voltage that can exist at this node while keeping everything in saturation so we say well of course m6 may go into triode because the drain voltage is becoming higher for the pmos and the expression is vg5 plus vtp vg5 plus vtp so that is 2.3 plus 0.4 so 2.7 volts so vo has to be less than 2.7 volts for m6 to stay in saturation let us also look at m2 all right m4 is okay because if vo goes high the drain voltage as m4 is going high so m4 will stay in saturation but as vo goes high which is a gate voltage of m2 the gate voltage of m2 increasing may drive m2 into triode so what is the condition there so for m2 vo max which is vg of m2 has to be vd2 plus vt vd2 is this voltage right so vg2 has to be uh, less than vd2 plus vt how much is vd2 vd2 is determined by vg3 because the vgs of m4 is determined it is 0 0.6 volts i'm sorry 0 0.5 volts vg3 is 1.2 so vd2 is which is the same as vs4 is vg3 minus vgs4 vg3 minus the vgs of 4 which is 0.5 so it is 0.7 volts that is vd2 so vo max is vd2 plus vt so 0.7 plus 0.4 equal to 1.4 volts so vo max due to m6 is 2.7 vo max due to m2 is 1.1 so the highest vo that can exist is 1.1 because if it goes higher than 1.1 the gate of m2 goes higher and therefore m2 goes into triode therefore vo max is 1.1 vo min was from our last side is 0.8 volts <coughs> so the output voltage swing of this telescopic cast code is 0.3 volts <coughs> 1.1 to 0.8 volts which is 0.3 volts and if you were to write an expression and you can convince yourself that this is true it is 2 vtn minus vgs4 right 2 times 0.4 which is 0.8 minus 0.5 which is 0.3 volts this is a really small output swing for a general purpose operational amplifier it is only 10 percent and this is poor what this means actually is that this op amp will work as a unity gain amplifier only in the range of the input and output voltages of 0.8 volts to 1.1 volt all right what happens outside this range outside this range some transistors will go out of saturation they will go into triode 
once they go into triode the open loop gain will drop drastically and therefore the closed loop gain which is if you remember your expression it is a over 1 plus a so if a itself becomes small then a over 1 plus a will not be close to 1 it will become much less than 1 and this will not be a unity gain configuration anymore of course ideally we want all our output i'm sorry all our op amps to have an output swing of 3 volts vdd whatever 0 to 3 volts is what we want but real op amps never have an output swing exactly of 3 volts that 0.1 volt overdrive voltage has to be there there is nothing we can do about it uh, in any op amp whatsoever okay so until now i'm i'm sure you have used some op amps you know 741 and this that and the other to build circuits but we kind of just take it for granted that if i we are given an op amp and we have put some supplies 0 volts 3 volts plus 12 volts minus 12 volts then the output will actually swing over the entire range uh, of the, uh, uh, the supply voltage and that if we put this amplifier in unity and configuration the amplifier will work from 0 to VDD in reality this is not true alright the telescopic cascode of course is a very drastic demonstration that this is not true in fact it is so drastic and this voltage uh, output voltage thing is so small that for this reason and for this reason alone telescopic cascode makes a poor op amp by itself so single stage differential amplifier made with telescopic cascodes is never used as an operational amplifier all right it is never used as a single stage operational amplifier this limitation goes away if we connect to this output of the telescopic cascode another common source stage so that it becomes a two stage amplifier then this output swing limitation goes away and of course the gain in that case also becomes of the order of gmr or the whole cubed and that configuration is used very widely uh, for to design high gain amplifiers in fact in your assignment four this is what you're going to do you're going to put together the telescopic cascode differential amplifier and a common source amplifier to design an op amp but single stage telescopic cascodes are not used as operational amplifiers all right uh, as an uh, homework i would like you to find the input common mode range the icmr of the open loop telescopic differential amplifier for the DC voltages that I have already specified. Oh, wait, what? I'm sorry. Uh, one second. In slide 7, not 17. Okay, so this is slide uh, 7, not 17. Yeah, so for this, please find the ICMR of uh, this amplifier for open loop. Okay, closed loop we've already found. Okay, so that is this lecture. Next lecture, we'll look at the folded cascode op amp as a single stage operational amplifier.